The Unsigned Podcast. What were you singing before? What was I singing before? Oh, why does it always <laughs> rain on me? Because you we got like, rained on, didn't you? I got rained on. Twice. I got, I got piss wet through. I was annoyed. <laughs> And then now I have your two faces to look at. So it's lovely. Untold Poets here, by the way. <laughs> that one. You can look at that one. Yeah. And we're joined by Lizzie. Manisha's here as well. And yeah, welcome to the podcast studio. Thanks for inviting me. You're very welcome. We, uh, I was looking, I was trying to think back when we actually first touched base because you've, we've, it's quite funny how similar I know, circles. Yeah, cause we, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause like, obviously it's all just through Instagram, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I looked back. We were March 2021. Wow. That was the first time that you sent me a message. I think that's 2021. I think that's when I first started releasing music again. Yeah. Yeah. I think because I, I think you have um, had a longer relationship than we have. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> not far off, but you know. I was scrolling back through the chat again. Yeah, because How... you did like playlists and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You've definitely been in a playlist or two yeah. um, over the over the years. Thank you, thank you. Over the, over the two <laughs> years, and I was scrolling back through our chat, and I the, I came across a piece that said that you're a father. So that was probably oh, about a year ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, ten months old now she is. So. Oh, really? Ten months. Yeah. Blimey, and she's just, like nearly walking. That's wow, cool. um, yeah. I bet that's quite an inspiration for your songs. So I've actually, yeah, two songs now. I'm sort of nearly finished, obviously about my little one. Yeah, because um, it's a big part of like my life, obviously. Um, and that's why like, I've been a bit slow with my music releases lately. Um, took like the, the year out, basically, just to, yeah. Obviously, priorities change, and yeah, of course they do. Yeah, and yeah, it's just amazing. It's difficult day. trying to balance everything, especially when you've got a kid as well. It is because, like, yeah, you can't just. Like stuff like this, for example, I can't yeah. just like, oh no, I'm going to do that. And like, I've got to think, oh no, wait, wait, I've got to like arrange something. And is it okay? Like, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. Make sure ha home's happy first. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> do you feel like the subjects that you talk about in your songs have sort of changed now? Would you say? Um, I still talk. About, I, I guess. I t yeah. Again, like some of my latest songs that I've been writing are about her, but then. I take ages to write a song. So it can, honestly, I've got songs that I still didn't finish from a year ago. Oh, really? And then I'd come back to them. I'd be like, why haven't I released that? And then I'd start writing again and then stop again for another like month. And then, so I've actually got three songs that I'm going to be releasing quite soon, but they are like old and I've literally just come back to them and then start writing them again. Right. Okay. Um, but they're talking about like just being young and like, Back in the old days, you know, like going out partying and all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, because like, yeah, I used to do that quite a lot. So, <laughs> um. well, that's probably quite nice though, because at least then you've got old material and old ideas that you can then release now. Yeah, because I'm guessing you probably have a fan base that like all of the sort of the themes that you've been talking about previously. Yeah, yeah, and you know, to keep that rolling, because yeah. obviously you're not you're not going out as much yeah, now yeah, because you've not. got a little one. <laughs> when so. was the last time you went out? <laughs> well, properly, uh, a while ago. Was it that The thing is, the thing is, is it's like, it, it's not that like, it's the hangover the day after. <laughs> oh, like, oh, like, that the is all it is, isn't it? Like, oh, no, no. It's, seriously, I'm, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, that's just, what I mean. Oh. Like, I did it once, yeah, and I went out and I got, got pretty hammered and then come back and like, it's the next day at like six in the morning. You can't go back to sleep either because this is when she was like quite a lot younger, so she was crying quite a bit. Yeah, like like waking up and, um, yeah, you, that that scream can't like. Oh no! Oh, no. In your head, oh, like no. you can't you can't get around it, and you don't get any easier as they get older either. No, because well, oh. they don't they don't scream anymore, but they certainly they still yell. Wanna, yeah, they still want to come in. Like my boy, right? He gets up at. The week, during the week, and this is probably goes for every kid out there, probably went for me when I was a kid as well. During the week, if you can get him up before seven, you've done all right. At the weekend, he's up at half six. Do you know what I mean? It's like, mate, like switch it around a little oh, bit. I see, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because he's up earlier, like, and you just, oh, bless him. Or this morning, so I had to get up early to go to meetings this morning, right? So I left, I left my house at like five half five, not as early as you get up. Um, but <laughs> I went to, went out. And as I walked into his room, like just to make sure he was all right, he was like shadow boxing. He's like in his sleep. Re in his sleep. In his sleep. How old, how old are you on? He's seven next week. All right. Dad chat. Dad yeah. Chat. <laughs> Love this. 
Well, we have, we've had do braids you, chat. We've had hair chat. I can't get involved in that. Do you find you've become <laughs> part of this other community that you never even knew about? Like, I'd be walking along with my kid now and like people just start talking to me. Yeah. And like other dads start talking to you and it's like... You would have never looked at me before. No. <laughs> oh, so it's, like, it's like dog walking, It right? is. It's exactly the same. You have a dog that, yeah. and then you go out <laughs> with your dog and then it's Kids like, oh, I've got a dog. Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a conversation starter, isn't it? Very much. Well, I do remember two old ladies. We were in a shop once and my little girl, she didn't really have much hair when she was like first born. Even up until probably the age of like two, she mm. had very, very short hair. And she was wearing... That's where she gets that from. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and she was wearing like, a, I'm sure it was like a pink dress, right? And, oh no, it wasn't. So it was like jeans and like a little frilly top or whatever. Yeah. And these two old ladies were like, oh, is it? Oh, isn't he beautiful? Oh, you can tell he's a boy. Oh, it, what? Except for the fact it's a girl and she's got pink on her top. Oh, no, it doesn't matter if they're wearing colours, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was quite, quite obviously a boy. I was like, fuck off. Did you feel like you had to dress her in pink just to prove No, but point? I told them off. <laughs> I was like, I've had that with my little one as well. And it's, uh, I just don't. I'm just like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even disagree with them. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I just got. I was just a bit like. I, was, I felt protective. I was like, whatever. So yeah, that annoyed me. Yeah. But no, they do. They. But I've been. I've been in the sort of in that club for like ten years now. My yeah. daughter was ten, so it's like. So you don't even remember the other club. No, not really. <laughs> not really. You still remember the other club? I remember the other club. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I try I try to I went out for a mate's like post wedding stag do due to yeah. like COVID and all that. And we were drinking beer all day and my hangover I think lasted at least a week. Oh no. <laughs> I just oh, can't. No. I the can't older you it. get the worse they get on it's bad, isn't it? It's bad, but also like you say, when you've got to get up early no matter what. It is hard and you can't with your with what you're doing for a living and having to get up really early and all that. How are you? Is that coming? Is that socially? Is that been quite difficult? Well, the drinking thing. Oh, I don't really drink much anyway. Not really. You're the main one on this podcast. I've said we need to go for espresso martinis to the Ritz. No, yeah, no, but I do like an espresso martini, but I'll probably have like two and then I'll be done. Oh, right. Okay. So it's not like that's my it's problem. Not a That's session. where I'm going wrong. See, I can't have <laughs> so. I can now more so, but in the past, if I'm having a beer, I'm having a few beers. I'm the same as you, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm probably a little bit better So buy now. a few beers, is I, I that like, like five? I don't like alcohol. I just drink to get drunk. Like, no, I like... I, oh, so you do like I alcohol. like beer. Right, I, ha I, I like have, the first beer, and then after that, I could... I, I'm just drinking for the... For the sake of it. For the sake of... No, I enjoy having a beer, pissed. and I enjoy being in a pub and sitting down and drinking beer, but I think the last couple of times I've gone out and got shit faced i think i've ended up really the hangover the following day has just been awful mm. and i just can't i just can't do it anymore it's just a waste of a day though isn't it you know yeah. like say if you go oh, out drinking and on doesn't saturday she night tell you that? Yeah. who's she um my lovely wife <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's just a waste of a day you like you've got two days off the weekend or whatever yeah. and then sunday you're just hanging out your ass all day pretty much it's just not ideal really no, it's is not it? ideal and then you're sort of punished for it <laughs> not yeah. by just the wife but the kids as well so it's not worth it and um, i was gonna say was the last night out you had i know you'd done because you had a gig going on when i i went to uh, oh, where was it, I've got it, it was a uh, it was with shumba wasn't it it was with oh, shumba oh yeah no, that was another birthday, one that yeah. was another one yeah yeah so i think that i went to see like in earnest i think in a church like, i was in st mary's church in chelmsford yeah. and you were like i'll come to my gig after if you're about and i was like oh yeah okay cool i'll let you know and they their gig finished like quite early and then I text you and you're like, what time are you on? You're like, oh, like two in the morning. I was like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I was like, I'll I go home, mate. Yeah, I don't think I'll come into that one, mate. Sorry. But yeah. how, how does a live setup for a gig look like to you then? I'm guessing you're rapping and then oh, you've like, got how, like how a backing I... vocal of a backing track. Um, so I play the piano as well on some of my songs. So I try and vary up my stage. I don't just like standing up there and doing it. So like for the, my last main gig, oh, what was it called? The cricketers, but it was around the back of the cricketers. There was, I supported Megan Rose. I forgot what it's called. Anyway, it's a really good venue. And uh, so I start off like acoustically, um, try and like warm up the crowd with like, um, it's like poetry rap I do. So mm -hmm. I try and do like a bit more of the poetry side to like ease them into the rap side. And then I'd get up and then start like performing. So I try and like different dynamics, different heights and stuff on stage. Yeah. That's interesting. So did you start playing the piano quite young then? Was that your first discipline? No, I just started... I didn't actually start that long ago. Um, probably because I, I used to be in a band a long time ago um, called New Subjects. And we did quite a lot of good stuff, um, like supported 1975 before they were massive. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, 
in, at Chinnery's that was. Oh, that nice. was like a last, because we were, we were like, we were getting somewhere and um, we were in there with Chinnery's quite well. Yeah. And like a slot come available to support them at mm. that last minute. And I went, oh, do you want to do it? And we didn't even know who the 1975 war, like, because they, they were just like coming They're up. They're coming up, yeah, right. yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it anyway. Like, we didn't really talk to them either. Like, it's a bit, it's really annoying because, like, <laughs> like knowing now, like how massive like the 1975 was, like, like Matt and stuff, and like you, yeah. like, um, actually meeting them and stuff. And like, I remember after the gig actually and seeing them all just like loading up their stuff onto their van. Mm. And I was going off to help, and then I didn't. I was like, why didn't I just offer to help? <laughs> Should always <laughs> offer. Friends, yeah. Always but, like, offer to help. It's just mad. Like they wouldn't be doing that now. Like getting sick on the back of their own. But like, you got to uh, start somewhere, haven't you? I mean, oh, where, yeah. where are they from? They're not Essex, are they? Um, I don't know actually. Oh right, yeah, no, because I, I was at the Chinneries last weekend. You were. I was. When I saw Rob, uh, sort of missions over there, I think they had Kemi Queen there as well, and a couple of others. It was like a local, local and live mm. gig that Chinnery's So, I mean, I like, I like the South End scene because, like, I think everyone knows everyone in South End, like, band wise. Like, yeah, if you're a yeah. band, you know who else is, like, sort of on the scene yeah. at that time. It's quite, yeah, because, like, you're just mentioning a lot of names that obviously I see on Instagram. And yeah. Well, they've got an all day down. I think, it, I think the Palps have got an album launch. Yeah. I think it's on, I'm guessing, I think it's the 8th of October. Um, it is the eighth of October. I think it's at the Alex and South End, and they've got all the bands that we've pretty much either had on this, had on the station. Loads of South End based bands are all going to be there playing on that day. So I think I'm going to go down to that because I have. When actually, was that again? I think it's eighth of October. Okay. At the Alex and South End. Yeah, yeah. That isn't written on the notes. There you go. Some, something off off. What are we saying? Tangent. Off piste. Yeah, off piste. Oh, on the piste. Um, yeah. So I'm. I think. Yeah. I think I'll go to that because yeah, quite a few bands there that. See, like you said, like you know them or you know of them. Yeah. You haven't actually had the chance to meet them yet right. and stuff like that. So Under One Sun are going to be there as well. So they're all... It's that. good to network, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of this industry is Instagram. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've met everyone over Instagram, and yeah. like including like yourselves um, and other bands, but I've never had to... And then when you meet them in real life, it's like, oh, I feel like I know you. Like, <laughs> I've been talking to you for years. And then you <laughs> see like all of our random posts about whatever as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because I remember I broke my foot, didn't I? And I think you oh, sent me yeah. a message like, how's yeah, your yeah, foot yeah. doing? Because you'd seen it on my yeah, story yeah, or yeah. something. So funny. So in your first band, what did you play an instrument or were you still No, rapping? so like, oh yeah, yeah, going back to that. Um, it was like, um, you know, like when Plan B was coming up with his like acoustic rap sort of yeah. style and stuff. Like so that's, that's, that's what we did. So there was four of us. You had a piano player who like started teaching me a little bit. I wasn't like ever like proper into to it when I was in the band. Uh, guitar player and lead singer. Um, that was acoustic guitar. Then you had me front man and rap, rap in and then a drummer. Um, yeah, so it's a four piece band. And yeah, I didn't pick up any instruments when I was in the band. I just literally was like the front man and right. but then when we were like going to jamming sessions in the studio I would obviously pick up a guitar and like play it and just learn a little bit here and there. So like yeah, I'm not I'm not amazing on the piano, but I can like do a couple chords and stuff and yeah. um learn my material basically. So what happened to the band? Was it just one of those things that just disbanded? Yeah, but like, basically we got to a point where there was like a divide and the divide was, um, we need to record more songs and just keep on recording and gigging. I was like, no, we need to record the songs we've got now, like properly perfect them and then start sending them out to like record labels and stuff like that. So it was, it was just like a divide into what- Which direction to which go. Which direction to go. And it, I mean, it's mad. I mean, this was before like Instagram and Twitter and everything was like a massive thing. It was when mm. it was just coming out. So like you didn't have these opportunities you have now. Um, just like literally you could scroll on Instagram now, connect with someone, yeah. give them a follow, give them a message, and then they might message you back and then it, that's it. And then you're like connected. Whereas back then it was like, we went to so, we were like on the road all the time, like gigging everywhere, universities, like everything. Um, and that's where you'd network and meet people is actually going out and doing mm. the gigs and stuff. Um, 
That's probably quite good, though, for you now, though, because you know how to network in real life, apart from the 1975, yeah. which you're gutted about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and also, you're, you've, you're, I don't know, you've learned how to connect on social media as well. Yeah. Whereas maybe, like, I don't know, 10 years older than you, they would have just been like, oh, social media, what's that? That's a load of rubbish. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. kind of had, like, both, which is probably quite yeah. good. I mean... I, I, I like when, when I go out and have a drink and stuff. I like being a social butterfly. So I like I, 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 I can just talk. That's why you're a front man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so after that disbanded, is that when you sort of started releasing your own? No, so I didn't do anything for about four or five years. I literally just I was like sort of writing in the background, like writing my own, like not releasing or anything. And it was mm. only like two years ago. Um, I think 2020, I started proper writing again. And I think 2021 was my first release. It was Pieces featuring Megan Rose. Yeah, how did that come about? Actually, no, no, no. My first release was Start to Speak. Right. Then it was Pieces, Megan Rose. And again, that's just through Instagram again. Right, okay. She's she's from Southend. Yeah, yeah. She's she's actually from where I'm from, Benfleet. Oh, okay. Um, And then, yeah, really liked her voice. A really good, she's a country singer. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, but I could hear like the sort of R&B side of her. Yeah. So, yeah, I wrote this song called Pieces, which is about, like, social media, um, the pros and cons of it. Um, wrote a hook for her, and then she came in the studio, did it, and it sounded really good. And then, uh, yeah, did a music video and stuff for that, so that's on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's... Who shot that? Jake Percy. Oh, shout out Jake Percy. And, yeah, he's a really good... I knew it was. I just, I... <laughs> <laughs> he's a really good <laughs> yoga I just wanted to give him a shout. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really good. Good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's filmed our filmed our events in South End Chumps when we've done those oh, really? <clears throat> back in May. Yeah. Got a lot of time for Jake. Um yeah, so how so with Megan Rose and also you um also done a collab with Mars Faye, didn't you? I and mean, this is when me and you spoke when I was on South End and we had an interview on there. So yes. that's when this track came out. So tell us about how you guys sort of linked up. So again, Instagram right. messaged, like liked her content. And she followed me back, was liking my content. And then it just, she's got a very unique voice. And I felt it fitted perfectly with LOV uh, Letter, which you can stream now. Um, but it's yeah, song. it's uh, <laughs> I, it's one of my favorite songs because she's in it as well. It, it just, I think our voices sound really good together. And yeah. she like sort of brings like that alluring sort of like hook, hook on the chorus. Like, yeah, she like brings you into it. Yeah. That was about the, you've, well, I know what the answer is, but who did you write that one about? Um, my, my wife, my lovely <laughs> wife. <laughs> and then you had a baby. Yeah, and then we had a baby after that was right. right. No. Successful track then, yeah. Yeah, it did well, it did well. <laughs> Don't write her anymore. <laughs> so would you say you've always been like a poet? Yeah, so going way back, I, was, I started writing when I was probably about 12. And this isn't, so I'm not saying songs like I used to listen to like the big like American hip hop stars like Tupac, Big Smalls, mm-hmm. yeah, like Method Man and all that. And I just really liked their rhyming. Like, I just liked the way the rhyming pattern was. Um, Eminem. Eminem was a bit later, so like, I started off with Tupac and Biggie, obviously like just like the biggest ones basically, aren't they? Um, and then I just started like sort of copying what they did. But then changing a few words, and this is when I'm 12, so like it's just like obviously I, I don't even remember anything I used to write. But that's when I started like getting interested into writing music, um, and then I didn't start it properly until the band, which I was about 17 years old, and we started right um, doing that. that and that, that started off with just me and John actually. Uh, John was the gu- uh, acoustic guitar player and lead singer, um, and he used to go to the casino quite a lot and gamble right so i said i'm gonna write a song called gambling man about you and he goes go and then um i wrote it and he goes oh could you do it to this started doing it and then he just come up with a hook quickly and we went let's do it on an open mic night did an oh, open really? mic night and uh yeah literally everyone just loved it and then it, that's that's when new subject started oh cool so, yeah where was the open mic night mariners leon C. oh right okay yeah. used to have a open mic night like every tuesday and it used to get rammed down there like every tuesday was just like yeah really like pumping it was really good because around that way now there's isn't peggy sue's is around peggy, south fenway yeah yeah peggy sue's is along london road yeah um 
It's a really nice venue, actually. Yeah, I've not been there before, but I've seen it like on Instagram and whatnot. So it's cool that those things are so, sort of still going. I know Twenty One put on a few different things, don't they, about people going down and having like an open mic session as well. Yeah. So it's good to see. And obviously, Islington Radio had the podcast, not the podcast, the acoustic nights, don't they, on a Monday? Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to just throw you into it and just like put you on the spot. But on Mondays, if you want to get involved with the acoustic sessions down at Islington, sorry, down at the Archway Tavern, uh, get in touch with them via their Instagram and you could be doing that on a Monday night. That's we... a good way to meet people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm. it, is, it is very good. Right. Let's do some quick fire questions. Oh, All right. <laughs> no, it's not, <laughs> not bad. Um, right. What were, what's the best gig you've done so far? What, played? Yeah, played. If that's as yourself, if that was in the band. What's the best gig you've played so far? The best... Uh, I played the O2 Indigo Rooms um, in the band. Nice. And there was put there was probably about 500 people there, which is pretty wow. cool. And it was part of a competition, actually. It's called Live and Unsigned. I don't think they're around anymore. Unsigned. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um we we actually come fifth out of the whole competition Ten thousand people entered oh wow and That's great. um yeah that was a proper buzz to be on stage and like just loads of so many people uh that was definitely a good i was going to ask with the band obviously sort of going their separate ways so long ago are you still in touch with any of the guys or do you know what they're doing now or yeah yeah i'll talk to all of them still oh, okay, um cool. john moved to canada for a while and he's still doing music right he's gone yeah he's I think I forgot what his band's called now. I follow him. You can, you can look in the break and yeah. give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other two, the drummer and piano, Ben, the piano player, um, he was actually in another band as well. Longy. Do you know Longy? No. no. Um, he, I don't know if he's still doing that, actually. So basically, they're still all yeah. doing music in some not. form. Matt, Matt just stopped straight away after we just... Matt's podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he, he, just, he just he just stopped straight away. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. What is and every, you always moan about this? What's your guilty pleasure track? Is there a track that you like and you probably shouldn't? What does it mean by that? What do you mean? Oh, by well, I'm going to get shouldn't. rid of this fucking question. It's, what, a, stu what, it's a stupid question. Oh, thanks. What do, you, a, what do you mean by like, like guilty pleasure track? Like I don't know, like some like liking something. And then I'm not from, saying I like this, but like if if I said Barbie Girl, yes, yeah, yeah, something like that, that would be a guilty yeah. pleasure track. Yeah, but I just don't think you should feel guilty about any song that you like. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. It won't be here. I'm deleting it now. It won't be back next week. You need to think of another question then, Miss Romaine. I'll say That's like, okay. what's that song where it's on Blue Abbey? the other day yeah i know what you mean yeah. that that's a good song <laughs> no, no, i was trying no to think like felt. something like 80s like something really cheesy from the 80s i like the 80s as a genre what, like macarena or something that's not from the 80s when's that from then 70s 90s, 90s isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. is it the 90s yeah. whatever <laughs> just details, too young. just details. too young just too young to details, know details yeah i wasn't born then no i was <laughs> <laughs> uh melody first or lyrics first lyrics an artist you should love but you don't an artist you should love, but, but you don't. What, just... Like a mainstream artist that is like, you know, they're by the mainstream, they're really successful, but you think, ah, oh, I just don't get it. It's really hard getting put on the spot because I, I have, I don't remember. We can come back to it. We can come back to it. I'll just, I'll just throw them all at you and then you can think about them and then we'll, we'll come, come back we'll to come them back after. To uh, a song you wish you wrote. So it's like a famous song out there that you wish you'd wrote. Um... Oh my god, these are so like just Mate. on the spot. Man. Yes, they are the quick fire questions. <laughs> this ain't quick for me. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. It is hard. All right, I'll ask you one. What's your jam? Like, what is your song when my you hear jam. it? Yeah. What is your song when it comes on your feet and it's like you're at a party or a wedding or whatever, and that song comes on and you have to rush to the dance floor for it? Oh, see, it's really hard, isn't I, I, it? I'd say Hotline Bling, Drake. There you go. That's you've got, you've got quick, the quick then. Like that. that's, that's, that's a good <laughs> Right, so what I'm going to do, right? Hang on, stay there. One thing you change about the music industry. I was expecting you to answer. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when it's directed at me, <laughs> then you've got time to think and it's not quite so fired at you. Right, okay. If you... Um, what is one thing that you would change about the music industry, though? Like? like, bearing in mind, like, oh we've had so many people on here. I'm going to feel for a bit. You just think. Um, <laughs> we've had so many people on here that have said, like, as an example, record labels. Like, there are some record labels that, like, aren't looking for, they're only looking for a certain thing. If that's TikTok stars, if that's someone who's had a hit and then whatever. 
slow burners potentially but it does seem very difficult i mean out of the amount of people that we've had on our shows individually how many of those have are now signed as an example not many not, not enough not, not enough there's there's too much talent out there that isn't signed it's 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 not that as well it's the artist is expected to be everything mm. yeah they're expected to be their own market their own manager like it's too much for the artist now to do and mm. with the competition that everyone there's a lot of people doing it now because they can yeah um but yeah it's, it's, it's a really a difficult thing. question because it's quite a well i hate the word saturated industry because that makes it sound as though like no one's like particularly talented it's just yeah, it's right. saturated i don't like that term but you know i guess it's really hard because there needs to be some way to cut above the noise and used to be it it used to be the record labels mm. whereas now i think to cut above the noise you have to have a certain amount of following you have to do mm. it all yourself that's what it's not even about the music as such anymore it's about who you are as a personality right um, you could make the greatest music and no one would like you just because or no one can of, hear you yeah, yeah that's the thing you could have great music out yeah. on spotify but because there's so many tracks out there who's gonna listen unless you push it yeah yeah but exactly. it's, it's and a you weird push it in weird ways now it's not just like oh here's a song and like you'd like the song you'd be like oh, okay and then you something else comes up funny and you're like oh that's jumped out me I'll, yeah I'll, and then you move more into we do get a contrast on here though we do get a contrast because some people have come on and said like they've talked about um is it jerry cinnamon or something who hasn't got any social media but is doing really well on spotify but then you've got some artists who are just delivering songs upon songs that ends up as sounds on tiktok and stuff and it's just seems to be there does seem to be still sort of like the old school way of doing it but from what I see, I mean, I just see people grafting all the time, like unsigned artists getting in touch with us, emerging artists getting in touch with our station, like all wanting to be on the radio. And I think that we are getting a few sort of like PR firms who have started, like who have sort of cottoned on to what we do and have started emailing us like loads of tracks from loads of different artists. And I don't mind that because like, you know, that those have been sort of it's not signed to a PR firm is probably the wrong term, but they've got so they've got some sort of management, some sort of backing, and they are obviously you know they must be doing quite well if they've got that. So you don't mind that side of it, but I do I think I do prefer it when you have artists actually coming to you, coming to you directly. Yeah, yeah. you don't mind like a cheeky DM because mm. ultimately for us depends how cheeky. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, yeah, it's, I, it's good. Like it's good when they just drop into your DMs because then it's just easy, you know. Mm, yeah. Like I always find if someone follows me, I go, "Oh, cool, you're an artist." That's like look at your most recent track and add it to my next review list. That yeah. sort of thing because they might not necessarily message you, but at least they've sort of made some sort of contact. Yeah, yeah. you know. No, definitely. I don't know. I, I feel like it's people personal that... as well when they yeah. do it yourself. As well. well, like you said, like when you, when you hurt your foot and you got in touch saying, oh, "I hope you're doing all right" or whatever. Just those little personal touches because mm. it makes you remember those people i'm not saying that you have to i mean i'm not being funny if you have written a song and you're uploading it to islington to me to lizzie to bbc introducing to future hits whatever there's so many different people and i, I you we can tell when it's a copy and paste and that's fine because we understand when people are uploading it you're trying to mm. get it out of there as much as you possibly can so you can't be personal with everyone yeah, yeah. but it is nice when that happens mm. or it's like oh i'm doing this gig your fans coming down or whatever it's just nice having that little personal touch there yeah yeah does make a hell of a difference. Uh, one artist you'd love to see in concert that maybe you haven't yet. Well, I've seen him. Kano was yeah. Kano's just yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a, like one of the top of my list out of like lyricists and just musicians. Um, Drake, I'd love to go and see Drake. Yeah, that would be pretty happy. What do you think about artists? Can they be, can they be dead as well? They can be dead. We'll dig them up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, like I'd love to go and see like, like David Bowie. Yeah, that would be amazing. Like, have you seen Moonish Daydream? It's at the cinema at the that's moment. That's the documentary at the moment. That's the documentary. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. No, no, it's no. very, very good. I went to see it oh, really? this week. Was it this week or last week? Whatever. I've been to see it anyway. And it's, it's really good. At the beginning, it's got like, I'm not going to spoil it, by the way, but it's got like quite a lot of like weird visuals and it's quite sort of psychedelic and that sort of thing. And at mm. the beginning, I was like, oh no, it's too much for me. Like, I don't like yeah, yeah. creepy baby heads and like weird stuff like that. It's too much. But it is really thought provoking. 
is honestly probably one of the most thought provoking things I've seen at the cinema because he's such an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah he was. He yeah, is David so Bowie. interesting. Yeah. And you can see his whole life and how he goes from being like 17 up until, you know, like the last thing that he filmed and his progression through like what he thinks and what he feels. Honestly, you have to go and see it. That's yeah. all I'll say about it. But is it only very, very good. exclusively in cinemas? It's not going to get released anywhere else. Do you have to go? Oh, to really? It? Is I, it? I, I think so. Is that what you've heard? I think so. Oh, surely it's oh, got to wow. be somewhere. I don't know. Well, someone would have gone in with a camera recording. Yeah, there'll be DVDs <laughs> in some of the pubs There'll definitely somewhere. be some blacklists, blacklist <laughs> recordings of it, if that's the case. But it is really, really good. So, um, What are your thoughts, though, on rap in kind of like pop songs? So, for example, Ed Sheeran does rap in his tracks. What are your thoughts there? I, I think he should stick to singing, to be honest. You know. <laughs> that's my, my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, it's just an opinion. I think um, he's got he's got H on his latest track, hasn't he? Who is it H? Yeah, H. Like, yeah. I mean, when when you get features and stuff, like <laughs> it's different. <laughs> <laughs> I, we were listening to it in the car the other day, right? We came on the radio, and Charlotte was like, "Who's who's this with Ed Sheeran?" I was like, "H," and he went. She was like, "His his voice has changed since he was in Steps." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, babe." I don't even. Yeah. Anyway. Well, Sorry, yeah. So, rapping in rap, um, pop stars rapping. Your thoughts? But pop stars, I don't know. Sometimes they can be good at, it, I guess. But like, what about know. Justin Bieber? Well, does he rap in something? Does he? Have you not caught his latest? No, what's his latest one? Well, no, but he's changed, hasn't he, Justin Bieber? Mm. So he used to be very poppy, and now he's he's gone into the rap scene, I believe. The rap scene. The rap See, this scene. is the thing, though, isn't it? It's like when you get to some this level of stardom, yeah, you can just do whatever you want. Like, I, I, like Kanye <laughs> West, like released that song. I don't know, like that little boo boo. I forgot what it was called. Like Scatman y- stuff. Yeah, and I, it was just like. You can just do whatever you want, can't you? Like I, um, we had we had a conversation about this the other week, didn't we? And there was a song that came out very recently that I said it was a it was number one, and I said I don't think if we were sent that as an unsigned artist, we'd play it because obviously you know we try and play everything. But would I listen to it a second time? Probably not. Mm. But because it's a mainstream artist, it's been playing nonstop. Oh, it's no, just yeah. like it's not. It's only be, it's only popular because that artist is popular. Yeah, yeah. It isn't because it's a good song. The thing that annoys me is you've got the, the, the typical radio stations and there are some very good ones out there like Six Music. They're fantastic. Um, there you go. Oh, yeah. And all of these lovely ones on there. <laughs> but you find the, like the mainstream ones. I swear they've got like 20 songs in there in their little they, shuffle they, list. They essentially have And they just kill them. They yeah. absolutely crucify them. They play the same songs again and again. If you listen to it hour after hour, like I used to do night shifts, right? And it used to be the same playlist yeah. every single night. I'd be sat at the desk and it'd be the same radio station on mm. and it'd be exactly the same songs at exactly the same time because I would just be sat there like waiting for something to happen. It's the same songs. There's so many songs out there. Why can't there be a bigger... How many songs do you think the average amount? radio station have on their rotation? Do you know? Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean? Like the whole... Day on the whole or... radio station. Oh, they've probably so... got loads in a little list, but they probably play like, you know, the UK Top 40 on repeat. Yeah, so you, on average, day. they have between 300 and 350 tracks on their playlist. And then obviously they're all split into A, B, C, D lists or whatever. But... Yeah, I understand. But what's 350 tracks times what's the average time for a song? Three to four minutes? Yeah. So they're not all Not all 350 are getting played, are they? They're, 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 I mean, for, as an example, on future hits, obviously we do the scheduling for that. And on there, we have got about 30 or 40 tracks in our A-list. Now, those A-list, you'll probably get, in an hour, you'll probably get eight A-list songs. And then you'll have a couple from a B-list, a couple from a C-list. The B and the C-list are tracks that have probably been on there for quite a while. So you're like, hit... Blah, 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 blah. Your hit 40 tracks will be on your A-list, basically, wouldn't they? But what I don't understand is, okay, I understand the general public. Like, if they put on a radio station, they want to hear songs that they know. Right, I get that. But yeah. it wouldn't hurt them every six song to throw in a song that's, like, from an emerging artist. It wouldn't hurt them, would it? Put us out of job, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I listen to, to radio, I won't like a song. And because it's played over and over again, 
I you don't like it. it. Yeah. I started driving and I go, what was it that for? What was because that? Because I'm was... happy. <laughs> 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 Do you know what? Let's bookend the first section with Lizzie's singing. <laughs> we are going to have a break and then we'll come back. <laughs> don't spit everywhere. We'll come back for section two and we'll do your dream gig. And you will have to think of some answers for that, all right? Okay. I'll, I'll. All right. See you in section two. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the Unsigned Podcast. Hopefully you're enjoying the episode this week, but I wanted to talk to you about our Patreon. It's a, basically a subscription service that puts money back into Unsigned, if that's the podcast, the radio show, whatever. It helps us generate a bit of an income to support these unsigned artists and to run events and also do this podcast every week. So if you want to support the podcast and support the Unsigned Music brand, you can go to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Unsigned Music UK, and you can sign up for just one pound a month what can you get for that price anyway let's get back to the episode the unsigned podcast it's all right i literally makes a nice change i literally have my clothes in a pound land bag <laughs> you're, <laughs> right? so, you're so classy matt because, you're because, so classy i hope this is recording is it are we recording yeah. because and <laughs> um, i have like so when i come here i have like my camera bag i have my bag for this and my laptop but because i was also going to like the day job i had a bag for that so i can't buy, like i've got three bags with me i'll just shove my clothes in the poundland bag so I've got you could have like an m well, s bag or something why does it have to be poundland it's, just, it's got a hole in it as well look. cheap and where, where, do you, where do you work during the day then was it reading did you say yeah so i i, pay, I work from home a lot of the time but mm. today i went for meetings at head office in reading well, that's quite so, far in it to go yeah it's not it's not ideal i don't go that often so i can't really moan but I came here straight from there and then I, I was sorting stuff out and then we went to press record and I was like, oh, I still shirt it up. It's all right. Well, there you go. Good treat for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Such a treat. <laughs> Such a treat. Right. Are we going to go back to those quick fire questions you didn't answer? Have you thought about them yet or have you literally forgotten about it? Go again. I just shut my eyes and I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, just don't look at him. Yeah. Yeah, don't look at me. No pressure. Yeah. The song you wish you'd wrote. A song out there, like a famous song, if that's... I Do for love, Tupac. There you go. Um, Melody, I've asked you an artist you should love, but you don't. Did you answer that one? No. Oh, I don't know. I can't think because if I don't like an artist, I just don't like them. Yeah, it's no. But like... what my point is is like in the in the like the limelight at the moment. Name some famous artists out there. At the moment. Actually, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. I don't. I don't like Justin Bieber, but one of his albums was actually pretty good. And yeah. I listened, I forgot what album it was. Is it the like, first one? <laughs> yeah, it, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like oh, baby, oh, I, don't, I don't know what baby, the album was called. It was fun. It was probably like you're very singy today. Three, I am. Yeah, ago, I don't four know years why. Ago, I don't know. I tell you why. It's because I've been music reviewing all day. Have you? Yeah. So Where can people? Is your playlist like available for people to listen to, or is it something? Yeah, it's on Spotify. If you oh, go okay. onto my website, which is lizzyromain.co.uk, click on Spotify playlist, and then you can navigate it from there. I need to sign up to it. I think. I yeah, don't think you should. I have. I listen to your show obviously every week. It's all indie. It's all indie and indie rock next week. It's actually really good. Okay, I'm cool. actually really excited about all the songs on there. Nice. So I will send it to you. Cool. Look forward to that. That would help, wouldn't it? Because you're on the radio. Absolutely. Where were we though? I feel like we were halfway through. Bieber. Bieber. Yeah. I forgot what the album was called, but I listened to every song and I was like, you know what? That album's pretty good. Yeah. Do you rate? Do you like Ed Sheeran normally, or is you don't? I like do it? like Ed Sheeran. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Well, no, no. I, here we go. Okay, so Ed Sheeran come out with the A Team. Yeah, that was one of his first like massive hits. Mm -hmm. So I heard that probably two years before he was even famous, and I was like, "This is a really good song. Yeah. I really like this." <clears throat> and then it didn't get released for like I don't know. I think it got re-released because obviously he had someone else behind him backing him. And then um, that's probably Jake Gosling by that point. Was that? I don't. Oh, sorry. That's just a, the his first manager. Oh, okay. Um, I had Ryan Gosling in my head. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, not like that. Ryan, Ryan's brother. <laughs> no, um, what, what, what were we talking about? You were talking about eighteen, 18. being re-released. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, How do you really remember the lyrics and but stuff? You were like, wait, I'm out of practice. I, I told you I was out of practice. I'm getting old. I'm getting to see that. No, um, but. I don't even know what, what we were talking 18, about. 18, <laughs> I know, 18. But why were we talking about Ed Sheeran again? But you heard it two years before it had been released. Yeah, but why was I released. even talking about it? Because about rating him. him. Oh, rating him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think he's the greatest songwriter ever to live. 
Um, but yeah, I think he's to me he's gone downhill to me. All right. I really liked his co- his collab. But then he, he writes he writes loads of songs for loads of people. Yeah, he does. You don't even yeah. realize he's wrote these songs. Did he do a Stormzy track? I'm sure that was in his his number six collab album. Is that for Stormzy? I, I, I just know he's sure wrote. I, I remember listening to a song and then I see who it was actually wrote by Ed Sheeran. I was just like, oh, okay. He does, there was a song I saw. Like, him. I think he does a lot of songwriting. Yeah, he does. There was yeah. a song. I can't, I can't. This is really bad, but I can't remember what it was. But he wrote a song for Rihanna. But it was, I think, my, maybe Justin Bieber sang it instead or something like that. I think it was a Justin Bieber track. <laughs> but he wrote it for Rihanna. But he just didn't. I has, I saw that actually. That wasn't. That was going around on TikTok. It might be on TikTok. Yeah, I yeah, saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Between the dances, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> what would be your entrance music? Like, if you were like a wrestler or you were going on the stage, you know, like when. A yeah, wrestler. Well, I don't know. <laughs> wrestling, I used to watch wrestling when I was a kid. Probably the Rocky yeah, but... theme. Yeah, the Rocky theme. <laughs> Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? Recommend an artist. If, like, you were talking about the South End scene as an example, mm. and you were saying how everyone around the South End area sort of know who, who everyone is. Is there an artist out of that group of people that you could potentially recommend? Does it have to be South End? It doesn't have to be. I was just trying to feel for you so you could give an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take like Mars Faye. Uh, yeah. I really rate her music. And yeah, that's obviously why I got her on the track. And she's, I think she's going to go. I think she'll go somewhere because she's really grafted at the moment. Do you think you guys might do another collab? P- possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, one artist you'd love to have done that change the industry right dream gig time oh hang on EP right you know when your information when you upload a track to us by the way at unsignedmuse.uk or on future hits you put in a little bio a bit of information about yourself and you also put a bit of information need, about your song yeah, you do <laughs> You do. Um, and your website, by the way. I know, I know. <laughs> this is what I mean. I told you. I've been. No, yeah, I know. I've been, I've been, I've been looking after a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah. Priorities. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I understand that. This. I understand Dad it. <laughs> I get it. I'm just taking a piss. Um, <laughs> EP is that still something that's being worked? You said about songs that you were writing a while ago and coming back to them. Is it still in the works? So, so the, the start to speak EP actually turned out just to be singles, right? Okay. So it sort of it went from gonna be in it went to be an EP, yeah. And then I was like, I'm just gonna release the, them as singles, right? Instead. Okay. So I am actually working on a new free track EP, right? Um, I, I haven't named it yet, but yeah, this is like the new songs that I'm right, been okay. writing. So yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Are just, they all going to be new? All going to be new, yeah. And I yeah, I do need to update my website, <laughs> untoldpoet dot com. <laughs> uh, told. I was just, I'm just saying. I, it was funny because I was looking at, I was going through like the job form stuff you sent me for. Yeah. I think it was for shut it down. Yeah. So I was having a look at that, and I was like, oh, I should have a look on like your Instagram and your website, just see if I make sure I've got everything that I sort of need or whatever, or if they've missed anything. And um, yeah, it's the same stuff. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, the thing is, is uh, do you know, I've got so much content. I've got, I've got two music videos. Yeah. Re- ready to be released. Ready to be released. Yeah. I just and haven't the released them. The tracks are out. Re- like, yeah. Oh, the tracks are out. Oh, the tracks are out. Yeah. Right. No, one of them isn't. One of them is. Release so, that so music what, shut video. It down, shut it down. No, no have you for? heard it acoustic? Um, I've got a music video for that, right? That Jake Percy filmed. Um, yeah, I, I just got to release it. What are you waiting for? The thing is, like, <laughs> it's all the build up, though. Isn't yeah, it? that's what I mean. I've got. You can't just be like, oh, here you go, guys. Is yeah, is a new like, video? To so, it like, and... and this is what I'm saying. Like, it takes so much time to do all this stuff, and yeah. that's why I was saying earlier. Like, the artist has to do everything at the yeah, moment, yeah. and it's like you need a like a four week lead up to get everyone excited or new people. Oh, is it? Oh, what? Like to get a bit yeah. excited about something, and like that just takes so much time. I yeah. remember when I was properly doing it just before she was, just before my little one was born. Um, I, honestly, I was just like twenty four hours a day looking at my phone, messaging everyone. Yeah, like it was just, it was mad. And like my missus was just like, it's taken over your life. And it's like I really, like I really pushed it for like two years. And now, like, I've just sort of taken a back seat, and like, now I'm just enjoying writing the music. And you're probably finding your best stuff comes in as well, mm. because if you've taken the pressure off a bit, 
and you've got other inspirations as well, you might find that that's when you're probably at your most natural. Yeah, 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 yeah. When the inspiration comes too. Mm. But yeah, a lot of time. And that's why, yeah, that's why I haven't really, because I want it, I don't want to just, because I've spent a lot of time doing it. Yeah. And then it's like, just to be like, boom, and then just be like, oh. That's, that's it is, really, yeah, it can be really difficult, yeah. can't it? Especially, with, what do you find, like, from your experience, like, with releasing a track versus releasing a music video? Mm. What sort of generation, like, numbers-wise, what do you think gets the better sort of traction? Do you think it's the tracks? I think it's the music videos. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. I think music videos are easier to promote. Right. There's visuals there. And when you release your, when you release just the music, if you've got a music video to it, you can sort of add visuals to clips of. Yeah. So like it brings in more attraction to just listen to the song before you've even released the music video as well. Yeah, that's what B Arnold's just done. She's just released Cross the Line and the music video came out literally like that with it as well. Mm. So it's a good way to, if it's possible to do that, obviously, yeah, it's a great way. Great do you find do it that. easy to come up with the ideas for music video? Um, I'm quite, I, I love cinema, I love film. And when I do write songs, I sort of always have a visual in my mind of yeah. how I'd want the music video to be. I'd love, I'd love to make music videos for every single song, but like, it's just not, it's not doable. Not like, Have you thought about doing money. it for other people? If you're like a visual guy as well. Is that something that you've yeah? Thought? That's a, like I listening to music. Like I've been listening to a lot of Sam Fender lately. Actually, love Sam Fender. <laughs> and like when I listen to his music, like visuals come in. Like there's yeah. there's certain artists and songs that like just <clears throat> give me like a visual aspect straight away. Mm. He's quite raw though, isn't he? He speaks from the heart. Yeah, yeah. He's like I mean I was none of his. He doesn't even like rhyme in his songs. He's literally just talking like in a really nice voice, but yeah. like his hooks are really good like get you down and he's just like it just repeats himself like over and over again but it's his voice and everything like yeah, yeah i've been listening to a lot of sam fender he's had to take a time out from his Literally tour recently this, he, yeah. he did a post on social media about how he had to cut his tour short because of his mental health which i think is great that artists are actually coming out and saying mm. the reason behind why they're cutting their tour short but he's yeah he's very I mean? real like yeah yeah did you see him when he was on was it this morning and he was just like I'm not gonna lie, I've got a hangover. I was, like, <laughs> I was just yeah. like, what a lad. Like Yeah, no, I think he deserves a shout out for tapes to putting that out there yeah. as well. We did on this show, we on the podcast, we do talk a lot about mental health and I think it's definitely worth giving him a shout out for sort of putting it out there and sort of shining another light on it. Um did you see Lewis Capaldi on? Was it this morning or something like that? Yeah, the, the uh, rimming. Yeah. <laughs> what did he do? He was on. What did? What it was Naga, wasn't it? What did she actually say to him? I don't actually know because I've watched it back a few oh. times trying to hear. She said like it sounded like rim. It did sound like rim. And then he repeated it back like, "Oh, I just thought you said about rimming or something." <laughs> and then she was <laughs> like, "We're just gonna take a break." <laughs> Naughty Lewis. It's <laughs> quite he's, funny. He's hilarious. Have you seen that one where that TikTok where he's like? I'm not even playing the piano. <laughs> Roger, play the piano. <laughs> and he's like, diddly, 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 diddly. he goes, see, smoke and mirrors. It's all bullshit. <laughs> We're all like an industry of liars. That's no. great though. Oh, I love him. I think he's That's brilliant. Cool. Right. Dream gig time. Oh, favorite film. Cause you mentioned film and cinema. Favorite film. Favorite uh, film. Uh, Don't put him on. Future. Oh, okay. Oh enough. yeah. So good. Have you seen the musical? I'm I haven't. Do you want two tickets for yesterday? Oh (laughs) my God, don't even. It's so tragic. Oh no. Okay, so let's cut a long story short. I've done done this as well. It was terrible. God, my partner was meant to put tickets for next Monday, but he booked them for this Monday, aka yesterday. So I actually put on our little group chat, I was like, we've got four tickets spare. None of us can make it. His parents who were meant to be coming, have got hospital appointments. Who wants free tickets to go and see on the West End back to the, back to um, the future of the musical no one took them i was giving away free tickets but they were for yesterday for yesterday no oh. she was trying to do it yesterday yeah on the day so it would have been the evening of oh the, right, right, right. Yeah. I it wasn't give away she wasn't trying tickets. to do it back in the future <laughs> that, yeah. would have, that would have been stupid <laughs> but, but i have seen it already and it's really really good oh i didn't what is this it's on your instagram so good. no what? this was on the little on group chat on yeah. the little group chat. if i was in if i was anywhere near london that day i would have done it but it was just i was so gutted i nearly cried yesterday and oh. then we watched titan panic and i was just there like Jesus. crying my eyes out like like you're glutton for punishment you know it? right anyway i've right. done that though like uh, me and my brother booked um the joker had like a mu- so you had like the musical orchestra playing 
while you watched the film. Oh, cool. At uh, the Cliffs in South End. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I was really excited about it. And then I was like, I was just like coming home from work, getting really excited. And then my brother rang me and goes, have you looked at the date? I was like, what? He was like, it's yesterday. Oh, like, oh no. Oh, no. And I was just like, why didn't we, why didn't both of us look at it? Like, why? <sighs> we just had like Tuesday in our head, but it wasn't, yeah. it was on a Monday. And it was just like, oh no. Okay, no. Oh, yeah. Adrian was kicking himself. He, he was like, "I, I bet you sort, were kicking I him as well." I need my life out. You know what? I was trying to be nice because he actually doesn't Ryan. book too much stuff. You won't it's, it's normally me. Right. No, so I was kind of like, I really felt for him because he oh, actually okay. tried. Yeah. So I was a bit like, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed, but I, I, I wasn't too harsh on him because you've got to encourage his behaviour. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm speaking to two. <laughs> yeah, we're staying quiet. I'm speaking we're speaking to dad chat here, so you <laughs> dad, know, chat. dad we've, chat. We've got a new podcast going. <laughs> right, let's do your dream gig. Right, so uh, on this, what we do, we ask you where your dream venue would be, who you would like to have on the bill with you, if you were headlining, main support, opening, whatever you want to do, uh, what would be on your rider, where your after party would be, etc. So we're going to start with your dream venue. Where, if you've got a dream gig. Anywhere in the world, no. what venue would you like to do? I won't look at you. I feel like it's putting you off. Sydney Opera House. For real? Yeah. Cool. Where? Sydney Opera House. Oh, that's an original answer. It is a very original one. This one, go. I'll let you touch my board. You know what? It didn't work because the volume didn't go up. So next time when Rob's manning that... Yeah. That was so funny. I need I, to press that and then I need to press that. What is that sound? That I didn't hear it. It's a clap. Oh, okay. But it was, yeah, it was funny. That was so funny with you I, was Rob, like I know for next time. For some reason. No, we've got a few sounds on there. I need to put some more on there. But that was a yeah. clap. Sydney, really? Sydney Opera House? Why that? Just because it looks nice. I went travelling to Australia and I just oh, remember, okay. and it's the first sort of. It's a really nice yeah. space. Yeah. You have good acoustics in there. Yeah, yeah it would. That's played with my little piano. With your little piano. Is it actually a little piano? No, no, it's quite <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Right, so let's get into your artist. So you can choose to be headliner, the main support, or the opener. You've also got two other acts with you. Who are they and who's fitting where on the bill? Well, <clears throat> I feel like I'd have to be the opener because I don't think you can... It's your dream gig, though. Oh, so, you like, choose... so you, you, you could be like the superstar? Yeah, 100%. Okay. You could be the oh, superstar. Oh, then. <laughs> you could be the superstar. If I must. You can, bring, you can bring people back from the dead. You can even have people at a certain period in their career. So if you were to say like Ed Sheeran before he re-released A-Team, as yeah. an example, you could have him. Thing is, is, I'd like to, like all those sort of people, um, like say David Bowie and stuff, I just wouldn't, it wouldn't fit. So like, No, I'd, I understand I'd, that. I'd yeah. go with, I'd like to support Drake yeah. and then have... The streets open. Oh, good shout. Yeah. That would be fun. Great shout. Just but what, the first album? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Grand, you know, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Grand don't come for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. It wasn't that one, the first album, no, was, was it? But it was, uh, that was a main... Because you had original pirate material as well, is that, yeah. Is that an album? Yeah, why not? Would you... Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, oh. yeah, it's a great hey. shout though. The streets, you, then Drake at Sydney Opera House. That's pretty cool. That sounds pretty That's good, pretty actually. cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who would be a special announcer? Who would bring you onto the stage? Um, We've had some nice answers on this. We've had some silly ones. We've had Morgan Freeman. What? Well, me, I was an answer. Oh, my God, Morgan Freeman. Who's the guy that played um, Mufasa's voice? James L. Jones. Yeah, him. Yeah. Mufasa, Ooh. Darth Vader. Who else? Was he Darth Vader? Yeah, James L. Jones was, yeah. Oh. He's also in Big Band Theory, which is very funny. He's got a nice voice. Yeah, he has, yeah. Um, James L. Jones, yeah. What else did he do, Manish? I feel like you'd know. Uh, Google would know. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> How do you spell it? James Earl Jones. Or the, or the guy that used to do like all the movie trailers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was two brothers that basically used to monopolise that. There's two brothers who basically done like all of the when I did media what, the, studies in school. The movies, yeah, it's like the summer, yeah. like that. They were like two brothers. Did a lot of them. Oh, you should remember their names if you learnt it in school. Jack and John. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, what would be a cover track that you would do at your dream gig? <clears throat> cover track. Yeah. See, we've like 
if I could sing properly, I guess I can dabble in it. I don't. Yeah. I, I can't hit notes. I can sing in one. I think it's the C key. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I can't. I can't go any. I can't go anywhere. Right. Um, but you're a rapper, so you haven't got to sing, have you? But if no. you, but that's what I mean. When you're rapping, it's yeah. like, what am I just? Am I writing my own lyrics to the song? You can is do it? whatever you want. Like basically, but then that's not a cover, then is it? That's just can like, be in a, an adapted cover, can't mm, it? I guess so. What? Um, I'm trying to think of someone who's done a cover and put a, put a rap in it. But I can't think. So I, I did a cover with um, South Church a band from South Church. Yeah. Um, we did um, Stormzy Ed Sheeran, and so she sung, and then this is on YouTube. You can it's actually one of my favourite pieces. I've oh, done. cool! And then I just sort of done my own rap over it, where Stormzy does it. Um, but like, if it was like my own cover, like I find it hard when people ask me that sort of question. I find yeah. it hard because it's like, am I just rapping the lyrics of what they've done? And then it just doesn't feel like it's a cover. It just feels yeah, like all right, fair enough. A bit karaoke. You could just, where, whereas you could singers, just nick the tune though. Whereas like singers put their own sort of twang and yeah. you know their own style. But you could nick it. the tune, bring in a, a singer to do some well, the chorus to, and then you could rap the verse go on to that one also, oh yeah so if you were going to bring on someone to perform a duet with you on stage who would it be okay no he he's not a lady and can't sing well, he's not a lady that can sing that's what i mean yeah he can yeah okay no yeah I'd, I'd what would you do together though like just a collaboration or yeah. something some sort of epic grimy because I love, I love, I do like, I, I, did, I grew up on grime as well. Like, yeah. Um, Roll Deep Crew and all that sort of stuff. With Wiley and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, some proper mashup of like rap grime. <laughs> <laughs> Fair one. That would, that would look good at the Sydney Opera House. That'd really be pretty cool. Can you imagine doing with... that with the orchestra? That would be incredible. That'd be pretty but amazing. But Kano's done stuff like that. Yeah, I know. And like, it, with rap, and I know, I think I've... I've can't think of any other rappers but that some other rappers have done it and it sounds Storms, yes. it sounds incredible yeah like literally when you get a lyricist like because some rappers like just i don't even know what they're talking about i'm, I'm really like into i want to hear your lyrics and i want them to make sense i don't yeah. want like all this mumbo jumbo sort of stuff what about buster can you keep up with him i can't well it just sounds good buster you can't you can't <laughs> Twister. You can't dig out. You can't dig out Buster. I'm not. He's fucking massive. <laughs> um, yeah. Buster Rhymes. I've got no idea oh, what okay. they're talking about. <laughs> you don't know who Buster Rhymes is? Oh, Buster Rhymes. I've heard of him. Oh, my God. Does that help? Do you know Twister? <laughs> you know when you messaged me back in March 2021 and I said, I actually don't really listen to a lot of rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> Buster. Buster, I can't really Buster. remember. Um, oh yeah, we were talking about orchestras. But I think I think any. I'm not really into like classical music, but I would love to go and see. You know when they do like the Ibiza nights uh, places with orchestras, like the Ibiza, I think Pete, oh, Ministry of Sound do it as yeah, well. Yeah, Pete, Dong, Pete yeah. Tong's done it as well. Yeah, That'll I'd love to go incredible. and see something like that. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Right, on your rider. So your rider is like special requests you can make that are waiting in your dressing room at the Sydney Opera House. You can have anything you want on the rider, but I feel like if we give you too much choice, it blows your head a bit. But we'll go for it anyway. <laughs> if you could request I've anything... I've already shut down. What did you ask me? <laughs> What's the name of your latest yeah. trick? Shut it down. Oh, all right. <laughs> God, that was, Tedious that link there. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> Available everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I just had a friend's quote come into my head saying, um, "It's lucky that my speed impresses you," <laughs> but that was that's a completely different context. Uh, right. So, if you had two choices that would be in your right in your dressing room on your rider, what would they be? You can have food, you can have drink, you can have something. Wait, people have said fifty puppies, a games <clears> room, <throat> whatever. What would you like? You can have two things. So what games room would be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be cool. We'll we'll go with a games room. Would you have like retro old school like Pac Man games, or would you go for like a PS Five or Gears of War? I'll I'll just have like. Well, how 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 long do you stay in your dressing room for? Anyway, it depends on it because like um, you probably be you probably only really be in there like maybe an hour before the gig. It depends if you've had a bit of dinner before because you do sound check, wouldn't you? You do sound. I'd want like a per that's a, I'd want. I'd want like yeah. I'd want a personal chef that just cook anything. Good that, answer. That I want. What would, what would what would be like your go to? 
like a lamb roast or something. Lamb roast. Yeah. Have a big roast dinner yeah. before you run and jump on stage. <laughs> <laughs> what can go wrong? <laughs> um, and then one more thing. Yeah. Mm. Maybe something for after. Because if you had a roast dinner. Some antacids. What, what, do you mean, like, <laughs> do you mean like, I come off stage and then have dessert? You can if you want, yeah. What's your favourite dessert? Uh, I don't know, pavlova? Like eat a mess? Fair enough. Or cheesecake? Yeah, cheesecake. Yeah. Stick your toffee pudding. That's my oh. wife's favourite. That's good as well. Creme brulee. Crumble. We're just naming desserts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and crumble, that's good too. What did you choose? I chose a personal chef. Yeah. And then the other one... Sticky toffee, pu- sticky toffee pudding. I can't even speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got just some... Just some drink i guess yeah just a little just bit of dutch courage to sort me out before i go on what drink probably some like absinthe or something absinthe <laughs> what <laughs> fucking hell there's dutch courage and then there's performance. petrol <laughs> fucking hell absinthe just a little shot absinthe you can tell i haven't been out in a while <laughs> That's no, that but that's is before like, you're that, doing your dream. That's like gig. you've never gone out. That's like when you're <laughs> exactly. 17, 15, you, 16. We haven't got that much time, so it's like, right, that's it. <laughs> but that's, that'll set you out. Mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember anything. Uh, what would be a made it moment for you if you've had one yet? Or what would be when you get, if you at the moment you said obviously you're taking a bit of a step back, but where would be your bit where you go, right, that's where I want to get to in the next sort of five years or whatever, or a couple of years or whatever? What would be your like made it moment? Um, I, I guess my made it moment would be if I was performing a gig and the whole crowd was singing your lyrics back to you. Yeah. That would be like, wow. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Because like, again, like I was saying, like an artist puts a lot of work into like everything they do and then for the, that to happen, it's probably to be reciprocated. Be very emotional, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. Uh, where would be your after party? Uh, bearing in mind... You probably know Sydney quite well if that's where you're doing your dream gig. But where would be your after party if you could be anywhere? So you would leave Sydney Opera House and then get on a plane, go to Vegas. <laughs> just, oh, a short, yeah. just a short, just a short trip. Short trip. Yeah, uh, and then just party. Vegas is an original answer, like, believe like it or a, not. Like a pool really? Party. Sure, it is. Yeah. Wow. We've had Monaco. Monaco. That's not Vegas. That's not Vegas. Oh no, casinos are there. Tax no, haven. That's not Vegas. No, Vegas is a great answer. Monaco. That's like the Grand Prix and stuff. Yeah, so Monaco is an independent state between Italy and France. Okay. It's where lots of people that have money stay there because I'm pretty sure you don't pay any tax. So Mm. like multi-millionaires, billionaires live there because they can all afford yachts rather than paying for people to pick up the rubbish. Uh, Right, that was was the dream gig. That's it. Sydney Opera House with, I can't remember who you said now. Drake. Oh, yeah. The Streets. Oh yeah, and Kano special guest in and cover track. We didn't pick one because because we didn't. Let's do a mashup. 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 Grime rap mashup. Grime rap mashup. Right, gig tour. Right, in. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just do four now. Yeah, because, might as well. Because why not? Why not? Do you want to explain it? No. Oh. You keep throwing stuff at me today. I'm just. Is this, is this some more quick fire stuff? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Basically, it's like Snog Marry Avoid, mm. but for music, right? Okay. So you've got gig. This sounds interesting. Gig, tour, put in the bin. But because okay. Lizzie's nice, we've also added right with someone as well. So gig is like Snog em, tour, marry em, avoid, put them in the bin. And then right, because Lizzie's nice. So we're going to give you four artists and you've got to decide to do one gig with them, like a one night gig, a world tour for a year with one of them, you got to write with one of them, and then the other one you got to put in the bin, and all of their. And you're picking the artists. We've yeah, we've right, already right. picked the artists. Quite, interesting. So then, the, whoever you picked go in the bin. All of the records you've ever made disappear. Bye bye. So gig tour, right bin. You got Eminem, you got Jay Z, you got Drake, and you got Dave. You could be really tactical with putting the bin because you could put in the bin all of their stuff, and then you could release it as your own. Oh my god. Um, Sorry, that brainwave has just come to me. Have you seen that film? Sorry, I know we're going off topic. I will answer these questions. Okay. The, uh, the one where he takes all the Beatles songs. It's called Imagine. Oh, thing. yeah. Have you seen that I film? I haven't seen it. It's pretty good. Is it? Ed Sheeran stars in it <laughs> as well. <laughs> of course he does. He's yeah. in every film. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. So. Weird, weird Ed Sheeran thing when he was in Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Was he? That was yeah, weird. that was weird. Yeah. Singing. It was a bit. Okay. He, he literally was sitting around a campfire. 
like in Game of Thrones. I remember that now, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, so gig tour, right, Bin. It's a gig, so I do a gig with him. Yeah, so one night gig, um, Eminem, Jay-Z, Drake or Dave? Right, Drake I'm touring with. Fair one. Uh, Eminem I'm, I'll write with. And then you're either gigging or putting in the bin, Dave or Jay-Z. I'm, so this is gig or put in the bin? Yeah, because you're done the other two. Okay, I will gig with... I'll gig with Dave and I'll put Jay-Z in the bin. Aww, oh, I think, uh, to poor be fair, Jay-Z. I like, I like Jay-Z, but I think that would be the right thing to do. I think so too. Just I fits agree. better. Just fits better. Uh-huh. Just fits better. Yeah, I think I've I've been that way. Although I did like the Linkin Park, Jay Z collab. That was like one of my favourite things. That was actually yeah, that was a, that was an epic gen. Loved it. I saw where um, a video the other day of I can't remember what festival it was, but it was where um, it was like a tribute to Chester Bennington mm. um, and Mike Sonoda done. Uh, in the end, he was playing keyboards and singing all of his bits, and then all of the crowd were doing Chester's bits. Wow, it's amazing! That's really, a major really, moment too. That is, well, yeah, it was incredible. Very, that was a very emotional moment. Right, that pretty much wraps us up, I reckon. So, could you tell everyone where they can find you and where you're looking at this one right here? Look in that one and tell them where your updated website's going to be. Updated website will be within the next month. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Untold Poet. Um, you can find all of my stuff on my dated website, www.untoldpoet.com. Uh, I'm on all streaming platforms, um, Spotify. Check out some uh, music videos that I've done on YouTube. Um, yeah, get searching. Get searching. Lizzie Romaine. LizzieRomaine.co.uk everything's was, on there i was gonna say dot com but that would have been wrong wouldn't it that would have been, wrong. would have been yeah. wrong yeah they would have typed it in and it would have come up with an error message every time rob and ollie try and promote anything we do they always get the website wrong oh really <laughs> oh do they do futurehits.com dot org dot org yeah we're not charity, you're an organ- <laughs> organization whatever <laughs> uh you can find you know me matt wary on uh, instagram and tiktok and all that going do this favor go and follow the unsigned podcast on obviously if you're watching us on youtube i sort of feel like i forget about listeners every now and again sorry if you're on spotify and itunes and everything else listening go and watch you on youtube go and subscribe and also go and find us on tiktok and instagram as well we're putting some like little silly videos that go on there um, and also if you're an unsigned artist get your music uploaded to unsignedmusic.uk also futurehits.co.uk and go and check out Islington Radio as well and the acoustic showcases on Monday night. I think that wraps it up. Thank you very much for coming in. Untold Poet. Cheers for having me, guys. You're very welcome. Thank you, Lizzie. Yay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Unsigned Podcast.